Okay, this review for the Tansio Mirai Zodiac. It's a 12 balanced armature. I believe four balanced for the for the base, four for the mids, two for the tweeters, and then two for super tweeters. Um, it's got three dip switches that can be configured in multiple ways. Mine is in the balanced configuration, which I'm pretty much sure is what it came with. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. I did the close-up with something else, but my listening is in that configuration. What, what is this? This is a mistake, is what this is. This is beautiful and it's fat, but I had it on this, and when I listened to start doing my review, I thought something is... Remember, I got OCD. That doesn't mean I can hear better than anybody else. I just... I'm listening for particular things, and immediately I started to think something was, something was wrong. Polarity tests, do all the stuff online... There's nothing wrong with the cable that I can pinpoint. It just, it's doing something. Put the cable that came with it back on from a company that has fantastic quality control. Probably checked this thing before it went out. I have no doubt that they did. And bingo, we're back in business. So let's, let's get into the music. Bob Marley coming from the cold. Big Boy Kill Jill. Black Sabbath, Sweet Leaf, Chicago. Wishing you were here. Elton John, Rocket Man. I might touch on that. Maybe not. Fleetwood Mac, Landslide, Eurythmic, Sweet Dreams. That's the tracks that I'm going to use in this review. So let's get to the first one, which is Bob. Bobby. Bobby. Bob Marley. Uprising. Um, I did this for a bass check, but um, let me be straight with you. These timestamps are like everything for me. At 27 seconds, there is a... Twenty-seven seconds. You guys can follow exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Sorry. Right there, right there is what sounds like a little baby symbol. 27 seconds. It sounds, it doesn't sound far back like it sometimes does. Like I can just barely catch it. Like it sounds like that Brillo falling onto metal. It's not loud. That gives some kind of indication that there might be a treble issue because of it's a high frequency event. It's fucking perfect. It's, it's life and death sounds perfect, but it's not a, it doesn't sound like a full size symbol getting smashed or lightly tapped, though that might be it. And it's not getting choked because it's, it's, it's life and death sounds natural, but it sounds, it sounds like it's away from the microphone. I don't know. I have people that, lots of people that play instruments that watch this channel. Go listen to that. What is that, man? It sounds, <clears throat> sounds brilliant. Love it. The bass, of course, sounds really good. Of course, not of course. It sounds really good on this set. But if it didn't, I would have not continued. Like the beginning is where the bass starts right away. It's a couple of instruments that are going on, including drums. Um, but 27 seconds. Mm, it's very, very nice. Um, next one is Big Boy. Which is this track. Kill Jill. Featuring... Killer Mike and Jeezy, and there's two low frequency moments of note. 33 seconds is a bass drop, your typical hip hop bass drop. Boom. So it's going, it goes from a like this Japanese retro. I don't listen, I live in Japan, but I don't listen to Japanese music. J pop kind of meets geisha, like the cover right there. Um, so you know, a woman, Japanese, girlish high frequency and then boom, 33 and then 47 seconds uh don 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 very slow methodical backbone baseline is starting to come in right at 47 they both sound great i i it's easier to focus on a four string bass guitar than it is on bass hits because they're random and you know a bass guitar because you hear it in rock and roll and all kinds of stuff so you get very familiar with it the strings are loose or 
how the bassist is playing the instrument that he's got it's an actual instrument instead of a button on a deck like the 33 bass drop might be it sounds great it sounds really really good and the upper frequency events which is this woman's voice and other stuff sounds very good too not a lot of mid stuff going on right there black sabbath sweet leaf which is right here I'm so, i love sweet leaf and then the beginning of this is played back really good on plane hours or stuff like that it, it, everything else has got a slight veil because of just the way that it is it's a kind of dark song but at 55 seconds there's drum the drum gets very clear right there that's the first drum hit that sounds like something's coming which is what's coming is going to be is kind of a little drum and bass solo in the track and that 55 second stamp is like when you know that it's coming or i know it because i hear that drum hit really clear and i know yeah there's a there's a little solo coming in up here both of them the low end is going to get together and jam a little bit um actually the guitar is too but the, it's really a bass and drum sounds very very good on this the tuncio they got like i said they got a house sound it's a very nice house it's a very beautiful house it's it's and it sounds really really good and they don't the the dip switches don't make a lot of ramp, massive differences so you're not going to get something like uh, another set where it's like dark but that's like turn those are like deactivating certain balanced armatures i think in the es12 because that was such a wild difference this is more like the anole and it's it's kind of subtle it does lift a couple db drop a couple db but they're not it's not big changes um next is mids chicago wishing you were here i actually stopped on this album because my mother had this album this is one of her many i remember hearing it many times this track and kind of clarity check also is the waves at the beginning there's very small not big crashing waves just like if you put a mic near a, a high tide you know like a one foot beach break um maximum it's very it's not very loud it's not it's not hawaii waves crashing on the beach it's like east coast stuff it sounds really really good and i got written down minute 28 there's a um the vocal sound really really good on this which is a lot of it's that's if the mids were sucked back or back a little bit that wouldn't sound quite as good as it does well i'd like to change the world baby if i could just to be with you tonight i'll fuck up the lyrics um sounds awesome and then i'm now i'm paying attention because i'm thinking that god he sounds so damn good and everything else that's following the guitar the the background singers which is the rest of the group are ah, 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 it's it's a kind of epic song actually if you haven't listened to this in a while go listen to this that's really good the vocals of guitar on this set sounds really really good with that song elton john i'm gonna skip I focused on the guitar, but I didn't timestamp it, so it's it's almost pointless actually. Um, it's a really good song. It's being there's a movie out right now, and I'm not a movie person so much, so I'm gonna I'll get back into Elton John at another date. I'm gonna go to Fleetwood Mac landslide, and knowledge bomb let's let's drop one of these every time we do a review so we're talking about the mids the vocals of male and female sound great on chicago the male vocals sounded great on wishing you were here female vocals landslide stevie nicks L now the knowledge bomb so i got two songs that i absolutely love and and uh, lindsey buckingham is a huge part of both of them one is um landslide and the other is um you don't know what it means to win never going back again that's from the rumors album those are that's my two favorite 
Fleetwood Mac, and that's all about Lindsey Buckingham's guitar. The 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 taps, the pulls, the plucks, um, the finger slides. I can catch all of it on Good Gear. I can catch it on this set. I can't catch it on the Empire Ears. Love that set, but that's not something that I would be listening to. Would be this track trying to listen to Lindsey's fine work. Then the bass is just a little too dominant. Now let's get to the knowledge bomb. Stevie Nicks. Nick says she wrote this song while contemplating going back to school or continuing on professionally with guitarist Lindsey Buckingham. Now, read into that as a man. How old was Stevie? She was very, very young at this time. Buckingham Nicks. Um, in her teens, maybe? How old was she at that time? Is this guy, Lindsey, the rock and roll guy, you know, leading her on a path where they're going to waste 10 years of their life and then she's going to have no, you know, official formal education and... You know what I mean? Like, rock the 70s, man. And their album, Buckingham Nicks, had been dropped by Polydor Records before they could release a follow-up. She wrote a song. She wrote the song while visiting Aspen, Colorado, sitting in someone's living room, looking out, this is a quote, looking out at the Rocky Mountains, pondering the avalanche of everything that had come crashing down on us, her and Lindsay. At that moment, my life truly felt like a landslide in many ways. So she's looking at the Rocky Mountains, and imagining a landslide, and like it's a, it's a metaphor for what's about to happen to her life. Little did she know what was going to take place. That Fleetwood Mac was going to sell like more albums than most anybody in history. I think Michael Jackson maybe passed him. I don't know. Rumors is, rumors is epic because of all the f drama that was going on with that group. But this is your knowledge bomb for the video right here. That 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 song landslide is like a metaphor for what she thought was about to happen to her life you know, on professionally with guitarist Lindsey Buckingham. Let's hold up a second. These two were lovers, man. They went a lot deeper than that. So as a man and person that's been in relationships, I'm sure that Stevie was thinking more of like, am I going to be all right when I'm 35? I think there was more to it than that. Um, the guitar in this track um, is very slow and methodical. And also, all the guitar, it says personnel, Stevie Nicks, vocals, Lindsey Buckingham, guitars, done. And there's more than one guitar in here. Um, you can go listen to the track if you want. So I guess Lindsey went into the studio a couple times and laid down a few different uh, sessions and put them on top of each other. I don't know if he produced this or not. Sounds good. So the Tansu Mirai Zodiac. I'm going to, the Eurythmic Sweet Dreams, the synths sound great. Um... I, I don't listen to it enough. I wrote it down because I, I it was nearby and I listened to it. I thought, that sounds fucking amazing. But I honestly don't listen to that enough to give, you know, if someone says, how does that, how do the synths sound compared to something else? I, I'd be blank. So if I could skip that. Um, so the bass sounds great. The drop in Big Boy sounds very good. Um, the, the backup, backbone, the... Four string basses sounds really good, really clear. The bass and uh, drum solo and Sweet Leaf sounds really, really good. Female vocals, Stevie Nicks in this track sounds fucking amazing. Um, Chicago, Wishing You Were Here. Male vocals and backing vocals sound excellent. Micro details are exceptional. It's a really, really good set. I'm going to put this at number two on my top five that I just released yesterday. I did listen to the S8F with this. I think the S8F is great, but I think that this is on another level. And I did also listen to the Voyager. I prefer the Voyager. I think it's got more power in the low end. And I like that. And it also sounds like it's got a bigger stage. If there was a weakness on this set, and it wouldn't be a weakness, it would be the perceived stage which is psychoacoustics um it's not really any different than the u12 and a lot of people say that has a huge stage i i disagree that that's the end of that um so the tensio is really a physical symbol of where chai fi is right now and that is where the rest of the industry is their high-end stuff is as good as any company's high-end and their garbage is same as other companies garbage name a company that, that has never released a, a shitty set that's been around for more than five years and you can go ahead and put that in the comment section i don't know that company uh, it's not sony and i love them um 
it's not Empire Years, it's not Campfire Audio. They've all released versions of garbage. Not these guys yet. Knock on wood. I'll do that for them. Um, these are fantastic. Are they worth the price? I've said before, I'm not going to get into that. Some people make in a week what other people make in five months that watch the same channel. That's what the internet is and how what that does. So I can't, I can't say it's not quite worth the price because the guy watching could be a doctor that makes, you know, enough to buy your house in a sh in short work. The internet and there's other people that are struggling and want every. They can't afford to make a mistake and say, ah, I'll sell it. You know, not going to listen to that guy anymore. So is it worth $1,400? Um, I'm looking at stuff in my collection. I'm thinking relative to other stuff in the industry. Fuck yeah. Yep. And how about the B-Lons? The B-Lons might go in my top five case. No shit. If this is really about the music and about the OCD and on moments and finger slides and people have been saying the B-Lons are, the, the instrument separation is poor. Fucking. Well, the opposite of a hype man is a fucking, I guess it's an anti-hype person. Some people that take something good and just want to find, there is no problem with instrument separation on the fucking B-Lons. What the fuck kind of source and what music are you listening to? How shitty quality of a library do you have? Please upgrade your fucking self. That it might go in my top five case because the S8 by Moondrop, I somebody said it's not available anymore. What's the next up? It would be Belon. No shit. Thirty five dollars set. I'm sitting a few spaces away from a one thousand four hundred dollar set because that's what the music says. Cindy Lauper. Oh, that's cheap trick. I thought it was Sam. It's like fucking wow. I don't remember that cover. And I'm done wasting your time. Am I? Easy. Sipping on a full day. No, 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 no. 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 Okay, you can go. I'm gonna tell a little quick story. Um I I have a competition car audio system um in my cars in Hawaii and uh, this track easy sipping on a 40 with three digital design 15 inches I went from Waikiki to Waipahu which is mm, 25 minutes on the H H1 I think about 20 minutes and I played easy e sipping on a 40 back to back and after the first replay because the the bass is hitting so hard that the seat is vibrating and you you don't realize that you start timing your breath your your breathing gets very shallow because the the seats hitting your back boom 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 and so you're you can't catch a full breath because your back's getting slapped like somebody's slapping on your back try breathing normally while someone's slapping on your back that's what happens with with big bass systems and that this 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 kid wasn't used to that he keeps asking me do you have earplugs and i said no i don't have any i usually did but i didn't have any that day and he's like could you turn this down and i'm just like yeah fuck you know, and he's like, nah, dude, seriously. And the, he couldn't breathe. And also my hands on the steering wheel, because the vibration is going through the entire vehicle, your hands get numb because the steering column is vibrating so intensely. It's It makes your hands start to lose their feeling. Like you can't feel the steering wheel anymore and you can't make a grip. And I'm going through that, but I'm okay with the bass, but this dude's not. And I, I replayed it one more time. I just said, fuck it. Let's do it again because that was fucking sick as fuck. It was just... Bass hits differently on dry and humid days. Two story. And this was a day where it was just slamming fucking righteously. And this dude, about three quarters of the way through the second play of this back-to-back, -back, actually started pawing on the passenger's window and I knew something was really up. Pulled over... Um, I just gotten off the op ramp in Waipahu. I think I was near Waipahu High School. And this dude rolled out of the car and started puking on the ground. He he got the bass, man. He got sick from the bass. I've been, I've had that too. I've had where I felt woozy because your 
brain feels kind of fucked up and your hands are tired and your passes through your arms and shit and sipping on a 40. I made a dude puke from too much bass. And now I'm out.